Yes. So we'll keep a short and sweet class today. So it's going to be Montegia fractures, which is both a high yield topic uh, from the exam point of view and is also a very high yield topic when it comes to uh, examining uh, pediatric and adult fractures of the forearm. So uh, Montegia fracture was basically described before the uh, era of X-rays when uh, Giovanni Battista Montegia described this in 1814. And uh, he described it as a fracture of the proximal ulna, which is associated with a dislocation of the radial head. Okay, so there are two components. The first one is a fracture of the proximal ulna, and the second component is a dislocation of the radial head. Now, with these two components, we can have many different varieties of uh, permutations and combinations depending on where the ulna is fractured and depending on which direction the radial head is dislocated. And this was described later on by Bado into four types. So this is the Bado's classification, which is the most commonly used classification for uh, Montegia fractures. So the type one is a fracture of either the middle third or the proximal third of the ulna with an anterior radial head dislocation. Now this is the commonest variety seen in children. Up to 60% of the uh, Montegia, pediatric Montegia fractures come with uh, type 1 battle. Then we have type 2, which is again, the fracture is the same place. Fracture of either the middle or the proximal third of the ulna, but the dislocation of the radial head is happening posteriorly. Now this is the uh, lesser common variety in the pediatric age group, but in the adult age group, this is the more common variety which is associated with a dislocation of the elbow as well. Okay. Then we have type 3, which is a fracture of the proximal ulna metaphysis only. So this is only the fracture of the proximal third ulna. And this is associated, type 3 is associated with a lateral or an anterolateral dislocation of the radial head. Okay. This is about 20% in the pediatric population. And lastly, we have a fracture of the proximal or middle third of both the ulna and the radius with the radial head dislocating in any direction. Now, most commonly type 4s dislocate or the radial head dislocates anteriorly in type 4, but any direction of radial head dislocation can be anticipated in type 4 injuries. Okay. So, uh, when you're describing these fractures, both the location of the ulnar fracture, the angulation of the ulnar fracture, like in type 1, it is an anterior angulation with the an anterior dislocation of the radial head. In type 2, it is a posterior angulation and a posterior dislocation of the radial head. Okay, so these are also important. Then we also need to know the mechanism of injury. Okay, now whenever we if you put out your hand straight in front of you and you try to pronate the forearm from supination, you realize that the radius is the bone which moves on top of the ulna, but the radial head stays in place. So when we pronate the hand, the annular ligament is keeping the radial head in place. Okay. So in a type 1 fracture where the radial head is dislocated anteriorly, the most unstable position would be a hyperpronation because this is where the, uh, the mechanism of injury of the type 1 battles, that is a hyperpronated elbow, outstretched hand, fully extended elbow with a hyperpronated forearm. So these children will require a reduction of the ulna and reduction of the ulna and stabilization or uh, plastering the forearm in supination because in the supination the radial head goes back in position of uh, posterior whereas in type 2 which is very very uncommon in children but commoner in adults the reverse would apply but since type 2 is very uncommon in children and more common in adults most of them will require only operative management I hope this is clear okay Again, in type 3, where there is a lateral dislocation or an anterolateral dislocation of the radial head, you would want to uh, immobilize the child in supination. Okay. But remember, 
do not get uh, into extremes of either pronation or supination for any immobilization because that could uh, increase the risks of compartment cell. Okay, so with that in mind, remember whenever the child comes to you, you need to first assess the deformity. Okay, make sure it's an isolated thing or if it's a polytrauma, assess the deformity, look for the joint above and below, assess the soft tissue and the skin for either puncture wounds or open injuries, check the neurological condition. So you can check for the median nerve the, uh, by making a fist, by making a paper, you can check for the uh, radial nerve. By making moving scissors, you can check for the LR nerve. By making the OK sign, you can check for the anterior interosseous nerve. And by doing a thumbs up sign, you're checking for the posterior interosseous nerve. And out of all of these, the posterior interosseous nerve in this particular uh, case would be the most important nerve that you're going to check for. Okay. Apart from that, also check for uh, vascular condition and compartment setting. Okay. So this is your case. Uh, you have assessed the child clinically and sent them for x-rays. You've asked for AP and lateral of the elbow and the forearm. Okay. So in this, you got the AP view. In the AP view, the ala looks quite straight. Uh, the radial head also looks, uh, the radius also looks quite okay. On the lateral view, again, the ala is not fractured. Neither is the radius fractured. So it would be assumed that this is a normal looking x-ray where there are no fractures as such. But if you see clearly, the radio capital R line is not passing the, uh, the long axis of the radius. The line is not passing through the capital M. It is passing proximal or above the capital M. That means there is incongruity in the radio capital R joint. Okay. Now to compare uh, from a normal with an abnormal x-ray, down you can see it normal x-ray where you are having a straight uh, radio capital R line bisecting the capital M. Okay. And secondly, if you see clearly, when you're seeing the lateral view of the ulna, the boo of the ulna is reversed in the abnormal x-ray, which is shown above. So this abnormal bowing of the ulna is a plastic deformation of the ulna along with an anterior dislocation of the radial. Okay. And for this reason, in the pediatric population, we can also check for the LETS classification. 